Hi, I'm Sharon Bill. Welcome to my Music Theory Tuition series where I work with you step by step through the ABRSM Discovering Music Theory grades. I'll work through every single exercise and explain everything you need to know. You can access information about the books I have available to help you on my website. Go to SharonBill.com. For advert free and longer lessons, you can become a patron at patreon.com forward slash Sharon Bill. If you can give me a like, that would be super. And please do subscribe to my channel to stay updated. You can support this channel by buying me a coffee at buymeacoffee.com forward slash Sharon Bill. Moving on now in the topic of intervals, we're going to move on to page 41 of the Grade 1 Discovering Music Theory Workbook. And let's look at exercise 2 now. So the principle is the same where we're just going to be counting the distance between the notes counting from the first degree of the scale and extending the difference between the notes. And now we're moving on to the scale of D major. So D is our home note, our first degree of the scale, our tonic. That's what that means, just the first step of the scale. But this time, instead of naming the intervals, we're asked to write them. We're writing an interval after the note given. So remember, that's a melodic interval, one note after another, as if it was in a melody. And we can just count the steps and it's easy enough unless you just forget to count step one so d is step one and we're always counting next door notes line space line space so if we're going from line is one then two is the space e so we're next door notes there however if you want to double check it you can either visualize this on a piano keyboard one two or you can just write out the degrees of the scale D E F G A B C D of course it's F sharp and C sharp but your key signature takes care of that and these are steps one two three four five six seven eight so D to E is a second and we know that E is the second so that's correct and so if you think you've got the hang of this, then by all means, press pause, go ahead and just try these and then we can check them through together. So let's work through these together now. So we have D as the first, line, space, line takes us to the third. That's D, E, F, but of course it's F sharp to fit into the major scale pattern. You don't need to worry about that. The key signature does all of that work for you. And so we need to go a fourth now. So we're going to go a step higher again. So we're going to go one, two, three, four. And we've gone from the F, F sharp to the G. There's the fourth. And now to write a fifth, we're going to have to go higher again to the A. One, two, three, four, five. And we know we've not gone wrong because we know that the intervals that go line, line, line are first, third, fifth and then in between notes will be the spaces because when we're going in step it's line space line space so there's lots of different ways to confirm that you've got this correct and now we're going to step higher if a is the fifth then b will be the sixth but we can count it to be doubly sure one two three four five six because it's got to be six steps away it can't be b at any other octave otherwise we've gone more distance than just that six steps and then the seventh is going to be the C sharp we don't need to worry about the sharp because the key signature's done that so we're just counting seven steps don't forget counting D is one two three line space line one two three four five six is the space so seven will need a ledger line because we're going to have to just extend this stave system because we've run out of lines now so there's our middle C which is sharpened here in the key signature to make it fit the major scale pattern and then an octave of course is going to be D and let's count we're going to have to go one higher than this so we want one two three four five six seven is the ledger line and so the eighth will be just above that 
just resting on, that's the D above middle C. And there's our octave. Now in this little box here, it's saying about theory and sound because of course we're writing music and it's going to get played or sung. And so each of these intervals, when we play these notes one after another, or even if we played them together as a chord, as a harmony, certain intervals sound pleasant, certain intervals sound unpleasant. And so if you play a D and an E together next door notes, they sound really harsh, it's quite a discord. Whereas D to F sharp is a very pleasant sound, it's actually part of your arpeggio. D to G is not unpleasant either, that's quite a nice sound. D to A is quite an open sound. Uh, a fifth is quite a, a harsh open sound. It's not a discord as such, but it's quite a raw sounding interval. And it's that sound that uh, is part of the harmonics that can be played and it's part of kind of the bugle system that plays on harmonics and so that's the opening of the last post or or something like that so here is six there's quite a pleasant sound that's a very pleasant harmony a seventh however remember we're going from d to f sharp is a very strident discord it's quite a harsh unpleasant sound and then octaves again, they're not unpleasant, but it's quite an open tone. And so you do get used to hearing what these distances between the notes sound like. It's quite interesting to just hear how the style and the tone of the music changes just by extending each note by a step. And so we can move on to exercise three, where we're going to put all this into practice now. But we're not necessarily going to be going in order, so we've just got to count carefully. Remember, we're always counting from note one, remembering to count note one. Here, note one is going to be our tone key, our tonic, our home note. So in C major, we're always counting from C and so on. But after that, uh, it could be any arrangement of notes. So by all means, do go ahead and have a go and we'll check through these together or work with me a little bit. But as soon as you feel like you've got this sorted, then do press pause and try on your own. It's okay to make mistakes. You can always just erase them out and have another go. So we've asked here to write a six. So we're in the bass clef, uh, but really we're hardly even thinking about that. We're just counting the steps. And so here is the C. We want one, two, three, four, five, six. We've gone space, line, space, line, space, line. There's our sixth. And if you weren't comfortable to just be uh, assured to leave it at that, remember you can always write out the degrees of your scale in step. And then there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And we can see that A is the six. And so we know we've got that correct. It has to be six steps away. It can't be any other octave A. Otherwise we'll have a bigger distance. However, um, it does give us a clue that we're in the right place. So here we're asked to write a third. So that's going to be space, line, space, C, D, E, one, two, three. And we can see there's E. And then a fifth. One, two, three, four, five. G is our fifth in C major. And now we've moved to D major and we're counting from D as the first degree of the scale. So let's just pop this little system here to help us double check. Of course there'll be F sharps and C sharps, so we need to add those now because remember we've got to add accidentals where needed because there's no key signature doing that job for us. It's up to us now to make sure we remember to do those because if we don't, it's not D major, is it? We know that D major must have those sharps to match the major scale pattern. So counting from this low D, we need to count an octave to the next D, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So space, line, space, line, and so on. One, two, three, four, five, six, Seven is the C, there's the D, there's our octave. Now counting from the D, we're in treble clef of course, so this is D. We need a fourth, so D is one, 
E is 2, F sharp is 3, G is 4. There's our fourth. We know that's correct. Now this is still D major, this is still the tonic, but we've jumped to a higher degree. So now, to make the third, we must have one, two, three from this point, that's an F. That won't quite do because it needs to be F sharp. And it must be this line here. You can't write it down here, otherwise the distance is too great and you're counting backwards, not upwards. So it has to be this particular top line F with a sharp to make that exactly a third in D major. And now we're changing key again. We're in F major now. And so we need F, G, A, B, C, D, E, F. Of course, F major must have B flat, otherwise it's not F major. There is no key signature doing that job for us here. And so we must bear this in mind should we be asked to write this note. So counting from this low F in the treble clef, we need to find a seventh. So we're looking for an E is the seventh. And we're counting F as one. And we're going to go space line, space line, and so on. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven takes us to this E. The, and that's fine as its own. There's no flats or sharps or anything needed there. So that's that job done. A sixth, counting from the same tonic, is going to be one step down, isn't it? So we think we're going to be here, but let's just double check. One, two, three, four, five, six. That's a D. And we can see that's a sixth. Except I've written it so tiny you can't tell. There we go. And then here... We need a G because we're going to have a second. However, notice that we've changed our tonic up an octave. We're not on this low F anymore. So we want, if that is one, this is two. It's no good to write it down here because you can see that is distance too great and you've counted backwards. It's got to be this next door step up to be exactly a second. So then, final question now moves to G major. So we can just do this if it helps. If it doesn't help, then there's no need. It doesn't hurt to be extra sure. Don't forget we need F sharps for G major. So we have steps one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So we're counting from this high G in the bass clef. We want a third, so one, two, three, three, space, line, space, and that's G, A, B, which we know is a third, so that's correct. However, now our tonic has dropped an octave, so we count it from this low G now. We need an octave, and so we're going to be going from the low G to the high G, this one here, but let's double check. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, that's our octave interval there and now we have a seventh so we're counting from this same low G if that's an eighth then a seventh is going to be a step lower so from this space it's going to be the next door line but let's just double check and count it one two three four five six seven takes us to the F however remember that won't do quite yet because in G major it must be F sharp. So we need the sharp sound because there's no key signature doing that job for us. And then just looking at this little information box at the bottom of the page, we can see that the intervals could be written in two different ways. They can come one after each other, which we've already discussed is called a melodic interval. Or they can come together as a chord where you play them, they both sound at the same time. The distance is the same, it's still a one, two, three, one, two, three, but this time it's sounding together rather than separately. 
And because these are sounding together like a harmony, we would call this a harmonic interval. But the principle remains the same. Either way, it's just a third. I hope this is helpful to your studies. Please do like and subscribe to stay updated. If you'd like to support this channel, you can buy me a coffee. And for advert-free lessons, you can become a patron. Do visit my website where you'll find many resources available to help you. Visit SharonBill.com. Thanks for watching. Bye.